Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. Founded on science and inspired by nature, all Bond Charge products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern day world. Their extensive range of premium wellness products help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, balance hormones, reduce inflammation. The list really is endless. Bond Charge ships worldwide in rapid time. They have free shipping on every sauna blanket with no hidden fees, and they have easy returns and exchanges. They also have a 12-month warranty. If you're interested, go to bondcharge.com slash manifest and use coupon code manifest to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash manifest and use coupon code manifest to save 15%. Support for today's episode comes from OneSkin. If you're like me, then you are absolutely ready for warmer and sunnier days, but is your skin ready? So your skin also goes through really big transitions between the seasons. So it's not just at the surface, but actually at the cellular level. But that's why it's important for me to nurture it from the inside out with products that do much more than just protect against the sun's UV rays. OneSkin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, OneSkin is keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code manifest at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code manifest. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support the show and tell them that we sent you. Help your skin stay younger and healthier for longer with one skin. Hi guys, welcome back to Manifest with Tori D. Simone. I'm your host, Tori D. Simone. And I'm joined today by my mom. Hi. Hi, mom. How are you, hon? Good. Good. Have you ever been on my pod? Not officially. Have you unofficially been? No. I mean, I've heard you talk about things that we've talked about, but oh. no, I've never been a guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You listen every week? Almost every week. I don't listen every week. That's wow. true. Hate to admit it. You used to watch all my old YouTube videos. Always. Yeah. Always. What a ride we've had. (laughs) Yes. So I was posting on, I think it was Instagram and TikTok that you've read like an insane amount of books. Yes. I saw you send a screenshot of when I texted you last month. Yeah. Yeah. So you see everything I post. Yes. I see your posts. (laughs) And I got so many (laughs) DMs. Like I haven't gotten that many DMs in a really long time. And it was all about you and how much you read and people want to know the secrets and they want to know how you do it and they want to know the tea not many secrets I'm a retired housewife (laughs) I'm a retired stay-at-home mom so I have time yeah you know I mean now that you're home again you're taking up more of my time yeah now I feel like a stay-at-home daughter now that I'm home (laughs) that's right so yes I'm back to kind of cooking more Mm -hmm. for you but besides all that I have a lot of time so I used to spend a lot of time with the TV on, like just as a companion to me during the days. And I got really bored of that. And I guess I started to get back into reading early last year. And then you bought me a Kindle for Mother's Day Mm -hmm. last year, even though I said, no, I don't need one. Yeah, you were so against the Kindle. Yeah, I was like, no, I've got books. I have to mop. I'm literally. My mom is like. (laughs) Holy menopause, girl. (laughs) We should have you back on to talk about menopause oh and what Nobody we have to look to forward that, to. Yeah, I'm just sweating like a <laughs> fiend over here. Um, yes, yeah, so you got me the Kindle for my birthday. Sorry. Um, for Mother's Day. I wish I could put the fan on, but it really would, it mess, would mess up, up the, the lighting. lighting. I know, I know. Um, so, yeah, Mother's Day, you got me the Kindle. Mm-hmm. And so I started getting into that. I had Kindle Unlimited before that, and I would read on my <laughs> I iPad. Just see, like plotting. I can't. Oh. Tori, I'm dripping sweat. Can we not? Can we not do this? I'm pouring out of me. Do you want to do it in like five minutes? I need a break. I need a break. You look much better. Okay. Sorry. Oh, my God. If you guys hear a little humming in the background. It's it's my fan. It's my mom's personal fan. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. So we were talking about how you were resisting the Kindle. Yes. Um, I had Kindle Unlimited before you got me the Kindle and I used to read on my iPad and you kept telling me, mom, you don't want to use your iPad. You want to use a Kindle. You can see it on the beach. 
That Whatever. was the biggest thing. That was big. You could read it outside, and I mean, with iPad, you could do this too, but you can read laying down. Like a yes. regular book, you can't do And I that. hate to sound so prissy, but the iPad gets heavy. It does get heavy. Yes. Yeah, so and there's there's something different about like reading on an iPad where you can just like open up your messages app or your email right. app or like... It's easily distracting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I will say... When I got that little setup that you got me for Christmas for the walking pad. I got her a stand and a remote for her Kindle. Right. Um, I still use the iPad on that because it's bigger. Mm Because my eyes are old and I need the bigger. It's easier to see. So I use the iPad there, but I'll use my Kindle all the other times. Um, But anyway. I love that you're on the podcast with me. I just keep smiling because I'm just so happy. Oh, well, thanks for having me. Uh, Yeah, I'm so excited. Okay, so you kind of jumped ahead of me a little bit. and. Talking about like how you could read so much. So let's first start with how many books. So today is March 14th. Mm -hmm. How many books have you read to date in 2024? I have to look. Can I look? Yeah, go look. I know I've read. And she was thrown off a little bit because we were on vacation last week. So she hasn't been on her normal cadence for the month of March. Is that right? I've read 71 books. What? (laughs) I've read 13 in March. Today's the 14th. So you weren't thrown off your cadence. I lost a day. (laughs) Um, What? I lost a day. I thought you were going to be like in the 60s. No, 71. Although I feel like I'm using two apps. I'm using Goodreads and... That book, Book Maury. Maury. Which do you like more? Um, Goodreads has a lot of work to do. Goodreads does have a lot of work to do. I like Book Mori in the sense that it has this silly little monthly calendar and it shows you. Yes, I like the visual mm-hmm. of that. So I use them both and I record them in both. But here it's telling, no, 71, that is right. I thought I maybe have missed one, but yeah, 71. Wow. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so much to dive into with reading 71 books in like 70, 70 days. Three days. <laughs> yeah um okay so I guess to start with how do you have the time to read 71 books I have a lot of time um I really do have a lot of time um I work with your businesses I work with your father's business which is also your husband my husband yes daddy whatever I work with his business but over you know doing especially with his business doing that for 20 plus years now I've gotten pretty efficient at what I need to do for him. Plus, it's definitely decreased. Things have changed. It used to be we needed letterhead and office supplies. We don't need that stuff anymore. You know, everything's Mm -hmm. digital. So definitely things have pared down. Um, So I've been able to streamline the work that I do for him pretty simply. Now we are getting into tax season, so I have to do the tax stuff for all of the businesses. That's going to take a lot of time. I'm going to lose some some precious I'm gonna days. lose some reading days there but anyway um I just I have time you have time and I can attest to this this woman has time every time I go downstairs she's on the couch reading a book mm-hmm. and she only gets up when I ask if For I something. can have lunch I know <laughs> <laughs> that's so true um and now you have little Frankie who's yes. the best little reading companion I he remember is. when you got Frankie Frankie is um, is he eight months now? Nine months. Oh, he's our little Shih Tzu and he's just the light of our <laughs> life. I wish he was in this podcast with us, but he pees every time he comes up here. Yeah. He peed three times the other day up here. I heard. Three times. I know. I don't even know how his bladder could hold three pee. They were three full pees. Oh. In he a span of like 10 minutes. definitely needed to go out before he came up. He did. Dad just let him out. Doesn't mean he peed. True. Anyway. Anyway, um, I remember... Right before you got Frankie, you were reading, obviously, a ton. Mm -hmm. And you were like, I don't think I'm going to be able to read with his new puppy. And that hasn't been an issue. No, hasn't been a problem. Because Ringo is old and he just lets you read. Right. He just loves to lay down with his head in your lap while you're reading a book. And now Frankie does, too. And now Frankie does, too. Yeah, he's grown up. You have the life. Very well. You just read. I kind of do. And you just have dogs laying by you. I kind of do. It's pretty good. It's a good life. It it is. I'm not complaining. (laughs) I mean... I do get bored. And, well, I will say, you and I have talked about boredom. Oh, my God. You guys. <laughs> my mom and I want to have a podcast called, what were we going to call it? I'm bored. Or you're, now I don't even remember. It was a boring title. It was The, the boring, boring Podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and we were going to talk about 
just being bored. Right. Yeah. During free time, we're so used to scheduling every last minute. Yeah. And as a stay at home mom, when you guys were home on weekends or vacations or summer, it was everything had to be scheduled. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Gen X kid through and through, meaning you left the house at 9 a.m. on a weekend or every day in the summer and you didn't come back until you got hungry Mm. and that was it. Or you just find food wherever you were at whoever's house. We were very feral children. So it now was, we couldn't be more homebodies. Right. It was weird for me to have to schedule play dates for you and things like that. It's, it's like, just go, go find something to do. It mm. was just a very different way of bringing up kids. So going from being very independent to then having to schedule things for kids and then all of a sudden having no kids at home anymore, all of a sudden I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what to do with myself. Now it's been eight years since you've been out of school and during those eight years yes I did stuff and yes you know we we traveled a lot and we 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 did a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. but the point is yes I had time (laughs) and things got boring yeah so yeah and you got bored of watching SVU yeah it wasn't even SVU it was regular law and order oh just so bad (laughs) started out with SVU and then I was like no I don't like this anymore so I went to regular law and order and that was always on always it was always on so much so that daddy even said he hates that dun dun yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's like quintessential mom yeah yeah very much and then when I would read I did notice that every time I would read a book like I binge it I don't read it over the course of a week Mm -hmm. or whatever no I I can't stop reading it and I think maybe that's where I struggle because I like, do you like long chapters or short chapters? Or do you makes no difference? Okay, because whenever there's a lot of short chapters, every time there's a new chapter, I have to decide if I'm going to keep reading or not. Okay, so it makes it harder for me to continue reading rather than if it was like a long chapter. Okay, then like I can get a good amount of the book done. But short chapters are also enticing because you feel like you're making quick progress. I f- but I also think that my attention span is just horrendous. Oh, you think? Yeah. Like I can sit down and like do deep work. But when it comes to like mind, that's why I like reality TV because it's like quick, it's mindless, it's stupid. So I can, it holds my attention. Okay. But sometimes with reading, I find that like I don't have the, like you sit down and you can read an entire book in one sitting. Yes. You're also a fast reader. I am pretty fast. I'm not a fast reader and I don't have the best attention span. Now this, I don't know the answer to this. Maybe you do. On Kindle, sometimes it'll say, you know, five hours until yeah. the end of the book. Is that based on your reading speed? Yeah. Oh, so it picks up how quickly you read. Yeah. Because I've noticed that they've gotten shorter. Yeah. Because you're a okay. fast reader. Okay. So it's picking up that I read pretty quickly. Yeah. Like when I downloaded Iron Flame, it was like 24 hours. <sighs> yeah. I still haven't and finished that one. And for you, it was probably, oh, Oh, you DNF. I did. Yeah, I'm 40% in thereabouts. And I just, it lost me. Yeah. It, I need to go back and finish that. There have only been five or six books in the last six months that I haven't finished. Have they been all fantasy? No. A, a variety of them. There's this one author that everyone, okay, you know I love Kristen Hanna. Yeah. As an author. And at the bottom of... Um, the Kindle when I was buying her latest book, The Women, which I haven't read yet. Mm. It's on my list. Um, uh, You know, other authors came up as suggestions. And this one was Elizabeth Berg. And a couple of her books came up. And I was like, well, if they say it's like Chris, I'm going to get a couple that none of them were on Kindle Unlimited. But I bought two books, I think. And I read one of them. And I was like, this is just not good. Not it. No, it was not it. It was about a high school reunion 40th high school reunion sort of thing I thought it would resonate with me because that's kind of where I am in life yeah but no and you kind of like reading like younger not to make you sound weird but you do like reading younger characters I do like reading younger. I do enjoy I don't want to say young adult fiction or whatever yeah, but get, what kind of books do you like to read let's get into what the people uh, want to know let's see I would have to say that most of what I've been reading Aside from the Kristen Hannas, which is like historical fiction, I do like forensic science, murder, mystery, that sort of thing. So I have a fair amount of that. Yeah. Growing up, you always read the A is for whatever. Yes. Sue Grafton, that whole series. A is for alibi. B is for burglar. If you haven't read Sue Grafton, read those. They're great little 
quick mystery. I can mystery literally reads. see them in the bookshelf in yes. your I read, old room she, at the um, old house. She died before she reached the letter Z. Oh, that's so Her sad. Her last one was Y. Oh, that's so sad. I know, but I've read all of those. So they were all very good. Um, but that was my, that you know, murder mystery, thrillers, detective stuff, legal stuff like John Grisham. That's always been my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And then I have to say, it was last summer after I got the Kindle, when I really started using Kindle Unlimited on the Kindle. And it was very handy being able to shop directly off the Kindle instead of, because um, you can't shop through the Amazon app. It, uh, you can do oh, you Kindle can. Unlimited, but you can't download Kindle content from the app. You have to log on to a browser. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So that's weird. Kindle Unlimited, yes, but Kindle, no. Hmm. But you can do all of it from the Kindle. So anyway, that kind of got me into more... Kindle rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Another reason. Um, and I think last summer, through Kindle Unlimited, I came up with a couple Colleen Hoover's and a couple Lucy Score books. The knock em out books by Lucy Score. Oh yeah, did you like those? Um, I I have to. I'm gonna be, sound like a total prude here. I was very surprised at the first one. I was like, holy, <laughs> it's a little more graphic than I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Not that it's super graphic, but I was like, not like pucking around. Oh my god, that <laughs> is a little, a little over the top. So yeah, I've been my mom down reads that, the spicy books. I've been down that rabbit hole now. You know what I mean? But after reading a couple of those, I was like, hmm. I'm not so sure about this. And even mm -hmm. a couple Colleen Hoover ones. I was like, yeah, okay. I don't like Colleen Hoover. But my, I, I did like Verity, though. I know you liked Verity. You I haven't read. read oh, you I did. did. I did. Oh, honestly, it didn't resonate with me the way you did. Well, I thought you wouldn't like it because of like it was weird. The mom like I it, don't want to give a spoiler, but like what it, the mom did yeah. with her kids. I yeah. thought you wouldn't like that. No. And I didn't. I didn't like that character. It was odd. Yeah. So I didn't love that. And but still at the end of it, I was like. Who did what? Yeah, like, yeah. I, still I still don't know. No, I still had no perception of what actually happened. Yeah, same. Um, another one that you and I had talked about was The Silent Patient. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that. I read that so long ago. I barely remember yeah, it. Yeah, and it, it was. That was like two or three years yeah. ago you read that. And I finally just read it this year. Oh, um, this year? Mm -hmm. oh. But I did like it. And then Grandma just read it out did in she California. Like it? She did. Wow. And she read it in like almost a whole sitting. Wow, go grandma. Yeah. So anyway. Um, so you like thrillers, you yes. like spicy romance. Yeah. And then I, I got down the hole of, yeah, the Lucy scores and the and the Rebecca Yaros. And I did mm. Fourth Wing and mm -hmm. started on Iron Flame, didn't go that, went through all of Rebecca Yaros's other books, that sort of thing. Some of them were very cute. Yeah. Some of them were okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's same, but I find that with just about everyone. Um, so yeah, I guess I, you I, love Kristen Hanna. I do love Kristen Hanna. Um, I have yet to find one of hers that I really didn't like. And that we don't cry at. Yeah. We cry at all of them. All of them. All and of then them. like, no one understands that like dad will see us crying and he's like, what, what are you doing? What do you, you guys like this? It's like, <laughs> you, we actually do believe it or not. Yeah. It's a good cry. And I have to say most recently the the book that wrecked me was Exodus. Oh, yeah, which is the Ravenwood Ravenwood series, which I just downloaded before we left California. But yeah. I, I've really been off my reading game, so I haven't yeah. read it yet. Flock, Exodus, and then The Finish Line. Um, loved them. The Finish Line, I thought, started out really slow, and I was like, do I really need to do this? But mm -hmm. man, did she wrap it up. Like, it, it was good. So let's get into some book recs. Okay, there. So let's start with, if you're new to reading and wanting to get into reading, what would you recommend? Well, it I guess it it so depends on what you like. It does depend, but like in terms of good characters, mm -hmm. can, I need to yeah I yeah, need to yeah look at my phone. I'm gonna recommend anything by Frida McFadden because oh, yeah. she's fast and she's like gripping. Yes, and a lot of people that haven't read in a while will fly through her books in like a day or two. Yeah, I and agree. she has you definitely need to have suspended belief with her books, mm -hmm. but um, they're fast. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. Um, in the L Kennedy. Okay. First I got, I fell down the whole hockey. Oh yeah. Romance. The hockey romance is a True. great world. <laughs> oh my God. There's so it's many a good world. Yeah. I mean, pucking around is a category of its own. Yeah. I could finish it. Which I'm not it. sure many people would really want to be in. Yeah. But I need my glasses for this. <laughs> um, 
L. Kennedy has a whole series of um, hockey romance books that are super cute. They're college age kids. It's college romance, but they're freaking adorable. Yeah. That's the thing. Like you want it to be cute. Like you don't want it to be like gross where it's like, ew. Yeah. Like that's how I felt with Pucking Around. I was like, this yeah. is really gross. It's too much. Yeah. And interestingly enough, like those were adults. Adults. Yeah. Whereas you'd think that you'd get the gross stuff with the kids or whatever, but I don't know. But no, the, yeah, I don't know. The younger ones were were cuter, yeah, cute. more romantic, yeah, as yeah, opposed yeah. to just smut. Yeah, yeah, like so, cute. Like Icebreaker was like so cute. Yes, Icebreaker was cute. No, wait, I didn't finish that one yet. Oh, you didn't? No, I'm still reading it. I was oh thinking of Mister Fixer Upper. I just finished that one. Oh my god, <laughs> that's a title, <laughs> Mister Fixer Upper. <laughs> and it was cute. It was like I a, can picture it. It was about. You, a, do you even need to tell me the plot? Is he a guy that fixes things? Well, yeah, he's a. Re- it's a reality TV show, like oh. where they redo your home. Oh my and god! He's he's the contractor on it. He's like the Ty Pennington. Oh guy. my god! <laughs> That's funny, Mister Fixer Upper. That's it was, funny. It was very cute, um, but again, cute. Like yeah, cute. Um, so yeah, some of these romances I like are cute, but th- yeah, they have some spice in it. But but it's cute. It's cute. It's, it's more wholesome than yeah. You leave like sex yeah. with a full heart. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, those are characters I really enjoyed. Yeah. They're cute. Yeah. Um, another one that I really liked was Say You Swear. Oh, yeah. You said that to Maddie and I when you were drunk one night. Yes, I'm sure I did. <laughs> um, now, I have to say, too, I did not like the way that it started. I started it once or twice and I was like, I'm not ready for it. Mm-hmm. And it, because it was it starts out with five young kids who just graduated high school and their parents give them a beach house. What? Yeah, like in Malibu. And they're down there like living it up and bringing in cases of beer and whatever. And I'm like, okay, this is so far-fetched. I'm, I'm we sure can that only it, have so much suspended belief. Correct. I mean, I'm sure it exists in the world. Right. But I was like, It's no, so far out of our No, no, no. Of, yeah. yeah. But once you get beyond that and they end up going to college and, you know, this character meets a new person and da-da-da-da-da. Like then it becomes really cute. But the... The way it started, I was like, I'm not resonating with this at all. Yeah. But I ended up loving the main character. Yeah. The, the male character, Noah. He was just phenomenal. So anyway. Okay. Um, good Rex. Yeah, that was good. And then, so what other Rex would you recommend, Justin, of some favorite books that you have read? Yeah, definitely the Sue Grafton, the A is for Alibi, her whole mystery alphabet series, whatever, was was just very cute. Now, I have to say, too, there's a personal t- touch to that in that she grew up in Santa Barbara, California. Oh, she did? Yeah, which oh, is cool. where my mom grew up. And, um, she, and we were there last and week. And we were just there last week, yeah. And she calls the book, all of the, her stories take place in a little town in California that she calls Santa Teresa, but, but it's, it's Santa, Santa Barbara. Barbara. Oh, how cool. So there's a little hometown connection for me with that. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, this is cute. Yeah. So that is what got me into it. But I really liked them. Quick little reads. Um, John Grisham, I love all the legal yeah. stuff with John, John Grisham. I think I've read all of those. Um, all of these sound so superficial. Like, I should be saying I'm... No, they don't. I don't know. There was an... If you're really into historical you fiction... You like fiction books. Like, you're not gonna... Yeah. There's one a historical fiction called um, Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. It's a huge book. It's a... It's a, a, This was way before Kindle days. It was a giant book. Maybe 800 pages. Um, fantastic book. But it's, a, it's an endeavor. Mm. It's an endeavor. And it goes through, like, medieval times and like crazy stuff but it was really well done so that's another one if you're looking for that sort of thing but I prefer even in terms of what tv I watch I like something that is an escape yeah um so that's why I tend to lean towards stuff that's happy and yeah if I'm gonna pick a movie I'm picking a rom-com something we've already seen yeah something I've already seen that's comfortable something no not too surprising right so that's my wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't have any earth shattering recommendations, any great literature to recommend. No, you don't need to have great literature, just like some books that you like that. And I guess that's another thing is how do you find all of these books that you read? I, uh, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. TikTok. Don't you think my mom should start a TikTok? No. A book talk? No. Well, book talk has, has taken a turn for the dark. Well, I think. I think you should start a blog too. 
I could do that. Yeah, that'd be fun. One thing actually I was looking for, and I don't know if any of your readers have any suggestions. I was looking for a journal. Oh my God, I can see it now. Hmm. You writing, hey readers. Yeah, a journal type um, thing that I can do on my Mac. I don't want to write on my iPad. Yeah. Like with a, I don't want to hand write. I want to type. But I would love a journal-ish type thing, a book journal Mm. where I can make my own notes about the books that I've read and be like, main characters were this. Well, you're talking to me. You know I'm going to make this now for you. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> but I want it on my Mac. I want to be able to. Yeah, I can make it for you so that you have it on your Mac. Okay, I want a book journal. Okay, I'll make one for you. Yes. Just I... tell me what you want in it. Oh, my God. We're going to correct. We're going to do it right. Yes, because I do want that. Yeah, I'll make one. Yeah. And I... we can sell it on Etsy. Uh-huh. I started to keep track of books on day one. I use the day one daily journal, which sometimes I'm not very good at it, but I did make a journal for books. And where I can type stuff in. But I got out of the habit of doing Mm -hmm. that too. I'm not sure I would stay in the habit of doing it. But I would like to do it. Yeah, I like a little book journal so that when we do talk about books that we've read, I can go back and be like, oh yeah, these are the characters. Yeah. And then you remember it. Right. Because as of now, I can look at this and see what books I read. And I'm like, I I I need to look at the summary and see who it was and what it was. Because I've read so many. They they do get a little (laughs) jumbled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just this morning, I finished a really cute one, part of the Blackbird series. It was the fourth one in the Blackbird series. I didn't read any of the other three yet, Um, but it was it was really very cute. And I was like, okay, this I'm going to read the other three now. Yeah, because I was like, yeah, I could totally do that. So you have Kindle Unlimited. Yes. Would you say like 95 percent of your books come from Kindle Unlimited? Yes. Yes, definitely from Kindle Unlimited. So you're already. So what's that? Ten, nine, ten, fifty nine a month or ten fifty nine a month. Yes. Um, and I would say Kindle is losing money on me desperately with that because no, honestly, excuse me. I did just read somewhere. If you spend it, if you use it a certain amount, the author still gets paid for every download, which is great. That's awesome. But the, um, but Amazon loses money on it. Jeff is fine. Oh, I'm not at all worried about Amazon losing money on me. He's fine. I feel good about that. (laughs) I'm doing my part to support these authors, but um, yeah, the fact that it's Kindle Unlimited, you're automatically limited yeah. to what books they put on it. You know what I mean? Not every book is on there. Kristen Hanna, for example, there only, she only has one or two titles on Unlimited. Do I you have buy, to buy hers? the rest. Yes. Hers are always worth it, though. Correct. That's the thing that we can't share on Kindle. Yes, I we don't We try to like look that. into that. There is a family thing, but that means we have we to have share to an account. Account, yeah. That means you're buying stuff on my card, and sorry, no, I'm drawing the line. And I, you, we use Stride for, or Amazon for Stride right. stuff, so it just doesn't yeah, make sense can't for share us to have account. a shared account. No, it doesn't make sense. I mean, you, I guess you could, well, whatever. We'll have to figure that out. But yeah, yeah. it's disappointing. If I'm buying a book I on know. my Kindle, I should be able to send you a copy of it like for a, free. Like a physical book. Correct. Yeah. And I really think they need to work on that somehow. Well, it is nice that Kindle books are cheaper than hard copy books to begin with. Yes. Like if like a $20 paperback book is like $7 on Kindle. Yes. Now, Kristen Hanna's are usually in the $15, yeah, $16 15, range. Yeah. Um, oh, wait. I just it. remembered another book series that I enjoyed. Okay. Um, this author, is, her name is Dorothea Benton Frank. Wow. And she writes um, tales about people that grew up in the out, outer islands of South Carolina. Oh, you like love the that coastal scenery. series. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're just really cute little reads too. Those are not, I wouldn't say they're young people, but it's people who are getting a second chance in life for whatever, mm. you know, so-and-so moved off the island, lived in New York, got a divorce, came home. Yeah. Sort of thing. So it's kind of second chance stories, which is a cute trope. I kind of like that also. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I mean, <laughs> doesn't affect doesn't come into my life at Happily all. Happily married. Yeah, right. That doesn't matter. But it's kind of fun to read that about other people. So yeah. Well, anyway, the college gotcha. romance also doesn't apply to your life, but it's fun to read about. Yes, that's true. That's true. That's the thing with books. You're allowed to just Escape. let your mind wander. Yeah. Escape. Yeah. yeah. And it really is. It's it's fun to read those. It's do you, really fun. you don't listen to audiobooks, do you? I do. Oh, you do? I do. Do you count that towards your... I do count that. Okay. It's, st- it's still time spent. Um reading listening to characters hearing their stories so so if you're reading a book at home and then let's say you're, you're like driving somewhere do you pick up where you left off no no it's not it's 
you, you have it's, separate books. It's different books. Okay. Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. Founded on science and inspired by nature, all Bond Charge products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern day world. Their extensive range of premium wellness products help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, balance hormones, reduce inflammation. The list really is endless. From blue light glasses to red light therapy to EMF management and circadian friendly lighting, Bond Charge products help you naturally address the issues of our modern day way of life effortlessly and with maximum impact. My favorite products from Bond Charge is their infrared sauna blanket. I love the sauna, but the big issue is I don't have one at home because they are so expensive. So I would always have to go to the gym to sauna, which isn't an issue, but I do like to sauna at the end of the day. And honestly, at the end of the day, I don't like to leave my house. And by the time I get out of the sauna, I just want to like crawl into bed because I'm so tired and relaxed and like stress free from the sauna. So that's where Bond Charge sauna blanket really came in and just solved this issue for me. I'm able to sauna now at home at a really affordable cost and get all the same benefits that I would get in a traditional sauna. And I can also stay in it for like 30 to 40 minutes because my head is out of the sauna. So I'm able to stay in a lot longer. It's really easy to clean. It heats up really quickly and um, it's just perfect. I am obsessed. Bond charge ships worldwide in rapid time. They have free shipping on every sauna blanket with no hidden fees and they have easy returns and exchanges. They also have a 12 month warranty. If you're interested, go to bondcharge.com slash manifest and use coupon code manifest to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash manifest and use coupon code manifest to save 15%. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't actually to search at all. So don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to the Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. So ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. One of the things that I love about Indeed is how it makes hiring really easy. I tend to find that I need different positions hired, like a marketing manager or someone for community, and I've been able to put exactly what I need on Indeed and get the exact candidates that I need right away, and from then I can make the best decision for me. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more that you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash manifest. Just go to Indeed.com slash manifest right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash manifest. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Support for today's episode comes from OneSkin. If you're like me, then you are absolutely ready for warmer and sunnier days, but is your skin ready? So your skin also goes through really big transitions between the seasons. So it's not just at the surface, but actually at the cellular level. But that's why it's important for me to nurture it from the inside out with products that do much more than just protect against the sun's UV rays. OneSkin's products are powered by their scientifically proven peptide called OS1. This peptide reduces the accumulation of damaged aging cells, the cells that make your skin less resilient and more prone to lines and wrinkles. So instead of masking these issues, OneSkin actually addresses them at the cellular level, boosting your skin's natural barrier to lock in moisture and help protect against the elements. They have a full line of face and body products, including the OS01 Shield, an SPF that prevents UV-induced aging and repairs cellular aging all at once. For a limited time, listeners will get an exclusive 15% off OneSkin products using the code MANIFEST when you check out at oneskin.co. So no matter the season, keep your skin looking and feeling healthy with OneSkin. OneSkin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, OneSkin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code MANIFEST at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code MANIFEST. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support the show and tell them that we sent you. Help your skin stay younger and healthier for longer with OneSkin. Selling a little or a lot? 
Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is a global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow every step of the way. So whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever it is that you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify also helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And you can also sell more with less effort thanks to the Shopify magic, which is your AI powered all-star. I love Shopify and it's also really cool to see that my favorite brands that I frequently shop from also use Shopify. It really just shows like how reliable of a source and site Shopify is. It really can scale your business whether you're only selling a few products or you're selling massive amounts of products. It really is such an amazing site and I would recommend it to anyone. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US. They're actually the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash manifest, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash manifest now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash manifest. Okay. Yeah. And I will say, um, when I started getting back into Audible, um, one of the ones that popped up was Pucking Around. Oh, God. Uh, well, I started listening to it before I read it. Oh. That was a huge mistake. This is like huge mistake. A pucking around smear campaign <laughs> podcast at this point. Yeah. Now I did. I did actually read it, and I did actually finish it. And I did actually. That's amazing that you could uh, yeah, get through it. Uh, yeah, I couldn't get through the first like listening. Scene. Listening to it. Uh. Uh-uh, no, that was bad. Be- and also, here's the other thing that I have a problem with audiobooks. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I think they're great. Um, I like listening to them when I'm at the gym. On, just on the flight home the other day, I listened to an audiobook instead of music um, almost the whole time because I was in a middle seat. I didn't want to have mm. my book open with people looking over my shoulders. No, totally. With, with some I of know, the books. It's I like, know. I don't want anyone no, to it's see like, these words. No one look, please. And I can't so tell you. you're just listening to it. But I can't tell you how many times I checked to make sure my Bluetooth <laughs> was on. <laughs> So I was like, oh my God, if anyone's hearing this out of my phone, I'm going to die. But anyway, so yeah, I listened to an audiobook the whole way home yeah. from California. The one book took me both flights and I listened to the whole book. It was done. That's amazing. So that was my day. I think the problem I have with audiobooks is if I don't like the voice of who yes. is reading the book, it ruins the book. Yes, I would agree. And I, do you turn up the speed? No. Oh, I do. Oh, I didn't know I, I could like do 1. that. I like 1.5. Oh, that's much better. Because, yeah. yeah, sometimes, sometimes I felt it was slow. dragging. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's come like, on. Let's pick up the pace. That also goes back to my horrible attention span, though. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, yes, in audiobooks, I do the same thing where I, I create my own voices in mm-hmm. my head. And I hear them. And especially when the author's describing, you know, he paused or he chuckled or this or that like I have my own yeah thing of how that sounds whether it's snarky chuckle or whether it's a laugh of, uh, like a happy chuckle right you know, based on the context and I disagree sometimes with how they, how read they it. interpret it right. yeah do you um when you visualize like houses for example I always have like maybe five or six houses that I always go back to and I just rearrange them a little bit really mm-hmm. no mine are all very different oh really yeah mm. like one is um grandma and grandpa's old house across from valley forge really yeah that one um the nightingale took place there in my head that was <laughs> the main character oh my home. gosh that's so funny yeah um what else uh lisa jewels the one where like she had then she was gone that okay. one took place there that's so weird mm-hmm. no i've never used like a house that i've been in mm-hmm. as perspective like I'm picturing the Great Alone right now, trying to create the scenery yeah, for that. Yeah, the Great Alone? That one almost looked like like their cabin almost looked like a tiny house to me. Okay, no, like I that's how I picture it, especially because she had like the loft. Right. Yeah. No, I have a very. I could draw it out. I could design yeah, the cabin for you. Same. Um, and same with Matthew's house. Yeah. Oh, 
Matthew's house. <laughs> um, and her parents' house, too, in Washington or where, yeah. when she went back home. Yeah, like, that I one could looked picture like, their house. Um, it kind of looked like our Sugar Bray house, but it was... Oh, yeah. No, not me. It was um, Very next different. to our neighbor's front door. So funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, no, I don't use... My brain doesn't go to places that I've already been. Yeah. Like, I picked, I picked new things. Interesting. That is interesting. Okay. I have some more questions for you. Okay. That we should get to. Okay. You're a natural on a podcast, may I just say. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. If someone wants to get into reading, what tips do you have? Like, do you have a reading routine that you recommend? Reading in the morning, before bed, in place of scrolling? What do you recommend? All of the above. I mean, I definitely read in the morning. I used to get up... I used to wake up in the morning and I always, I still have a couple of games that I play. I do connections and I do the Wordle and, you know, I do a couple of Sudoku and w I have these daily games that I play. Um, but then I would just lay there and scroll. Mm. And now I read and I pick up my Kindle and I read. And if um, I've now recently gotten in the habit of saying, I'm going to stop the book here because I know I'll read in the morning and I don't want the pressure of trying to pick a new book in the morning. Yeah. Because I, I do about a book a day. So yeah. sometimes I'll leave it till the morning and then start another one. Like I did that today. I probably had 25% left in a book and I read it this morning in an hour and a half laying in bed and then got up, took the dogs for a walk. And here I am talking about books instead of reading. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So I'm I have slowing down your pace a today. A little bit. That's okay. And I'm going out tonight, so... Oh, you are? I might not have another book have, today. And you're taking Ringo soon. Oh, yes. I have to take him to the vet. Oh, poor Ringo. He'll be okay. Let's hope. Let's hope. He's just old with I know. old skin. Anyway. Okay, so you recommend to read in the morning. Yeah. I, I like reading in the morning. I know they say blue light at night is bad for you or we whatever. Uh, yeah, I you guess. You put on dark mode, right? Yeah, I put it on dark mode. Um, And oftentimes, I'm still reading when he goes to bed. And lights are off, and I'm just there reading. This morning, I actually woke up with my Kindle next to my pillow. I must have fallen oh, asleep that's fun. with it um, still reading last night. So, um, yeah, I do like reading before bed. But if you have – you're probably better at that than me because I can't put the book down. Like, I just want to keep going. I just mm. – there's maybe it's a sense of accomplishment or something that I need to be able to oh, check yeah. Finishing something a off book is the ultimate sense of accomplishment. Yes. Like you, you are better than the person next to you when you finish a book. Yeah. I feel like I did something. Yeah. And, yeah. and granted it, at this stage in my it life, does feel good. That's probably why I'm doing it so much. Cause I'm like, I feel like I'm doing something yeah. again, which there are a lot of days where I was like, I don't do anything. Yeah. You know, yeah, it gives you I have purpose. a lot of time. So yes, it does feel good to, finish a book and maybe that's why I'm having trouble stopping stopping finishing a book I it was funny I said one of my new year's resolutions I think I told you was to read a book a week in yeah. 2024 <laughs> yeah. and then very quickly after I had read like seven books in 10 days in January I was like hmm, maybe I should revise my goal so I put it up to 100 <sighs> and then in February I put it up to 250 oh my god oh but I'm way beyond that I mean, I'm... How many do you think you're going to do this year? I don't know. I could probably do a book a day by the time the year's done. So 360? 366 today. 366 I mean, this year. 366 this year. Wow. Yeah, I probably could get there. For the record, I do know that there's 365. I was just giving her a few floater days. <sighs> well, if I'm going to go for a book a day, I should go for a book a day, right? On average, yeah. Yes, on average, of course. Wow. I have a few blank days on my calendar. But then there was one day, I think I read four. Now, don't get... Oh. No, no, no. Calm down. <laughs> they were tiny little, like an hour and a half long each, little novels that all tied in together. They were very cute, but I was like, this is just... Racking up my numbers. Like, four books. Cha-ching. You don't read like <laughs> memoirs or anything, right? I haven't. Do you have any... If anyone has recommendations for me, let me know. Oh, yeah. I would drop them in the comments. Yes. I would love to know what people like. I, I'm yeah, not I against it. I haven't been a memoir. I read like Andy Cohen's like Daddy Diaries, but okay. that's just because he talks about like reality TV stars. And stuff. I remember I used to. Yes, I have read them in the past, but it hasn't been my go-to. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Grandpa always wanted me to read like real history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like this book about Thomas Jefferson or this book about. 
yeah, whoever he would else. hate what you're reading. Oh my God, yeah, he would not <laughs> count this as reading. No. I mean, he he gave me a subscription to the New Yorker for <laughs> for my birthday one year because it was just you know he likes the articles and they I'm ended like, up by the toilet in your master bathroom and correct. we would just look at the cartoons. Correct. That's that's what the New Yorker's for. <laughs> oh my God, I just realized that we don't have magazines by the toilet anymore because we all just bring our phones in. Mm-hmm. Ew. Mm-hmm. I know it's weird, right? Yeah, it is weird. Oh my god, that brought back such like an unlocked memory having the, the New magazine Yorker rack. in the bathroom <laughs> and Philadelphia magazine. Yeah, and I would always <laughs> remember seeing the same one until a new issue came the next right. month, and it's like oh, same cartoons again. Maybe I'll see something different this time. <laughs> but you never read an article? No, never. I just looked at the cartoons. I did read some very good articles in the New Yorker. I do have to admit. Is it still around? Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah, and the authors are great it's very good but um yeah he was he read it cover to cover all the time and I think he thought I should too I didn't all the time but I did read some it's really good he also wrote an autobiography who did he did yeah yes he did yeah he did okay let's see how many books do you like to read how do you find so many books book recs for newbies book recs in general How do you read so many? I think we covered all of these I want to talk about. So let's go into the reader questions. Is there anything you want to say before reader questions? No. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here, mom. Do you read one book at a time or do you rotate between a few to keep it spicy? Hmm. I typically read one at a time. Like I still have Iron Flame going for Mm. the last three months. Um, But it isn't, I'm not current with it. So no, I'll pick up a book and I either finish it or I ditch it. And like I said, I haven't ditched too many, but I have ditched a few. So I like to focus on the characters and the story of one book at a time. Yeah. That's just me. Also, do you like clean out your Kindle? With Unlimited, you have to give the books back, right? Yes. For the books that you buy, do you ever delete them? Um, I've deleted... A couple of them that I was like, yeah, that's a three star book. I don't need to read it again. Yeah, I'll get rid of it Um, or I'll archive it rather. Oh, you can archive. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. I hate when my Kindle library is cluttered. Like I wish I could organize it. Well, you can. You can put them in collections. Oh. I mean, they still show up on your library, but you can say five star reads. That's that collection or four. You know what I mean? Ones I want to read again over here. Um. And I have to say, there have been a couple unlimited books that I have read and re- and I don't want to return. Like you I want to keep them. Yes, I mm. hoard them. And a couple of them, I actually did return them, and then I bought the book like to keep. What? Um, the Ravenhood books. Oh. I'm absolutely going to reread those. Um, have it, once the, I finished the third book, I was like, I need to start again because there's a lot that I might have missed, and I really want to read it again. Not yet. I'll wait a while. Yeah. But... I definitely want to do that again. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. I would love if Kindle could like, I don't know, not feel like a prehistoric piece of technology. Yes. And was maybe a bit more with it. The other thing I wish is, and maybe I'm missing it, is when you'd go into Kindle Unlimited and you see a title, I I wish it would tell me you already rented this. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, just don't show me everything that Unlimited has. If I've already borrowed it. Don't show it to me again. You also have really good author retention. I never remember the names of authors, but you can like list them. You don't remember the names of t- book titles, but you remember True. the author. Yeah. That's a good quality. Um, Best books you've read so far in 2024. Hmm. The Raven. Ravenwood series. Hold on. Let me look. She's going to look. Let me look. Um, the one I finished today, I really did like. Let me find it. That was called... All Your Life by Lily Foster. I did like that one. I read one last week called Saving Noah. Um, Definitely not my normal content. Um, That was by Lucinda Berry. Um, Odd topic, Mm. but a wonderful mother story. Um, But gut-wrenching. Oh. Um, Wow, that one that one was also very good. So let's see, that was 2024. Oh, also in 2024, I read Megan Quinn has another series of the hockey romance ones based on a fictional hockey team that the Vancouver Agitators or something like that. Oh God. Really cute, 
romance books. I think there's four out now and a fifth is coming on this one other character that oh, fine. has been in all the books so far, but he's due for his, his, story. his story needs to come up. So I think she's working on that one. So those were very cute that I would recommend. That was Megan Quinn. Um, do you like um, Ellen Hildebrand? I do. I don't have any. I don't think she's, she's in Unlimited. Unlimited. Yeah. So I don't have any. But yes, I've always liked her books too. And you like Jodi Pickle Picolot? Yeah, Pickle. Um, Pickle. That was the um, Lovely Bones. Mm, yeah. I don't know. She did. Um, she's done a lot. I know. I'm drawing <laughs> a total blank. Well, she, the one I always think of is the school shooter one. 17 minutes, I think. It, or 19 minutes. Oh, I didn't minutes. read that. I didn't kinda, read that. Kind of tough to read. Yeah. I do like that storyline. I mean, I do like that type of book. Um, and a lot of those are gut wrenching. That's mm-hmm. kind of what this Saving Noah felt like. Yeah. And I think based on what I've read and heard on book talk about Lucinda Berry, that that's a lot of kind of how she writes. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to reading more of her stuff. Um, Kristen Hanna, obviously. Oh, Archer's voice. Oh yeah. You I, love that. I book. did really enjoy that. Mia Sheridan. There was a follow up book to that and that didn't feel like it was a follow up at all. Mm. No, just stick with Archer's voice, but it was, it was well done. There was a weird book called Does It Hurt? I thought that was really odd. But did you like it? I don't know. Okay. It, it was. It, You're it was, unsure. Yeah, I'm unsure. Okay. I wouldn't. Eh, I don't know. Um, the L. Kennedy ones, the, the those hockey ones, those were very cute. January. Silent Patient. Um, more Kristen Hanna. Oh, that was pucking around. <laughs> that took a couple days <laughs> in January. That's a big book. A lot of Rebecca Yaros. So, yeah, no, but not, nothing like crazy in January. I, I liked things that I've been reading more recently. Yeah. Better. Yeah. You read um, Harry Potter, right? You oh, all Harry the Potter? Harry Potters. I did enjoy those. I d- actually, I didn't read. How many were there? Five? Seven? No, I think there is. Well, how many movies are there? Nine? There's oh nine movies. Oh my gosh, movies. are there that many? I think there's eight books. Okay. Then, no, I only read through the fifth book. And again, I guess I just started to get lost. I was like, what else are we going to yeah, talk about? Yeah, when the like, plot gets so... Convoluted, yeah. yes. Yeah. But I absolutely loved the first three or four of those books. Mm-hmm. The fifth one was a chore for me. Mm. And then I just lost it. Yeah. Um, but yes, I really enjoyed those. Um but that I read them when they first when came they out. When they first came out, and you guys were definitely younger, and you know those were big commitments, yeah, too. And I remember I I was the same way then too. Like I didn't want to when I got into a book, I didn't want to stop reading it. So having two kids at home it was like I I have stuff I need to do. I can't just sit here and read the book. So it was it took me a lot longer, but it was definitely a. I I remember there were days on the weekends where daddy would take you to softball or something and I'd be like I'm just gonna sit here and read yeah like, I, I gotta remember finish you this reading book. the yeah. Harry Potter series yeah yeah I definitely remember that and then Maddie liked him too yeah um how does she still savor them while reading them so quickly I feel like some people read for the hustle culture oh no it's not hustle culture um I really enjoy the escape of it um yeah, it, I'm not just reading so that I can say I checked them off. I know it sounds that way because I'm reading so many. This isn't, it's not a brag. I, it's just like, I can't believe I'm this. I'm proud of myself that I'm not sitting in front of the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or scrolling mindlessly. Yes, yeah. I, I haven't had the, I haven't had the TV on forever. And yeah. even at night, daddy and I used to struggle. Like, what do you want to watch? I'm like, oh my God, I can't stand this question. Every day, it's what do you want to watch? What do you, and I, I, I don't know what I want to watch. I don't watch anything. Haven't thought about it yeah. this entire year. I mean, yeah. he'll watch what he wants to watch, or he'll work on his computer, or he's doing his own book. He's yeah. Well, I guess that's a good thing to also talk about too. How do you read so much with a partner? Um, it's it's what did you call it? Parallel play. Parallel play. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Maddie calls it. Yeah. yeah. So it was. Um, I yeah, he, she'll listen. He's doing his thing, and I'm doing my thing. We're in the same room together. And every now and then he'll say, hey, do you have a second? And we'll talk Mm -hmm. for five minutes. And then he goes back to his thing and I go back to my thing. And the noise doesn't bother you. You can read what's on the page. It depends. Um, It depends on the book and it depends on what the noise is that I'm hearing. I mean, sometimes I'll say I'm 
don't be offended. I'm going to go in the other room. Um, You know, you do what you want to do. I'm doing what I want to do. But most of the time it doesn't bother me. It takes like a few minutes to like get in the zone. But then once you're in the zone of your reading, like you don't even hear background Don't even hear it. Yeah. Wild. Yes. You're like so in the flow. Yeah. And you hear the voices in your head. You Mm -hmm. hear the characters talking in your head. Yeah. It's it's I love it. Yeah. I love the escape of it. Yeah. It is a really good escape. Um, let's see. Opinions on reading the last page slash sentence first. Oh, no. What is that? Can you, I don't know what that really means. What, would you read the end of the book, the very last page of the book before you start the book? Do people do that? Yeah, some people do. Why? I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I don't want to do that. There was a time in my life, I remember a scene in a movie when Harry met Sally, where he would read the last page of the book first and she said what are you doing and he said what if I die before I get to the end I want to know what happens what a morbid thought he was that was his character he was kind of a morbid character that way but I remember thinking "Mm, okay a couple times I did it and I'm like no that ruins everything for me yeah no I'm definitely a chronological reader yeah I'm not gonna and I rarely skip ahead either even if I find something boring and irrelevant I'm like there's a purpose to this even if I find myself skimming over it I'm like no 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 do it right yeah, like it. go back and read it because authors don't just put wasted words in their book like it's there for a reason Iron Flame had a lot of wasted words <laughs> yeah, well, you're right maybe that's why I lost it too many characters in that one yeah no and same thing like the plot just got too like yeah. Like what, it, what were all these no. things that she was adding in? It just, I'm only for, like I said, 30, 40% yeah. in it just wasn't clicking with me. You're not missing much. Okay. I, I, Zayden and what's her name? Violet. Violet. Their relationship is exactly the same at the end of Iron Flame as it was in the beginning. Oh. Of, or the end of. Is Four there Point. another book coming? Yeah. I think there's like 17 more books coming. I, I know there's at least two more coming. Okay. So we're going to have to reread to like remember what's yes. going on. Um, speaking of Iron Flame, have you seen, I don't know how often you're on TikTok for um, book talk at all. Have you seen any of the fan art of, that people put up on book talk? Of Iron Flame and stuff? Of Iron Flame or of any book series. Yeah. Um, I find that fascinating. Me too. I always look up characters. Yes. I'm, I do really enjoy that. And the talents that some of these people, I know it's all AI lot computer AI, generated yeah. or whatever, but I'm like this is it, this is really cool yeah. to put a put a face to it. Now sometimes I'm like, no, that's not the face that I had yeah. in my head, but I can get behind it. I always look it up. But, I like the visual. Yeah, yeah. But then I know I'll be disappointed. Like if the show comes out, I'm like they're not going to look anything like that. Yeah, because these are AI people. I these feel aren't like real people. Yeah. A lot of the times when I'm done a book, I'm like, oh, they really need to make this into a movie. Like every but, book I read, I'm like, I want to see it in a movie. Yeah. But you know, you'd be disappointed. Yeah, I would always. Well, you know what? I wasn't disappointed with. Um, oh God, what's the one? What's the one where the crawdads sing? Oh, I wasn't yeah. Dis- I loved the movie. Yes, I did too. A that lot was of people well didn't. I liked I it. I thought it followed the book Although, right didn't, on. Didn't but didn't we say the main character? She yeah. was she was she was tan in the book. Yeah. So her she had a completely different skin complexion tone. was, yeah, was way off. different in yeah. the movie. Yeah. So that was But she did the actress did a great job. Yeah, loved the like I still loved the movie. Yeah. But it was it good. just wasn't how I pictured Kaya right. to look. Right. But everyone else is pretty spot on. Yes. I would agree. Yeah. That I was loved a, it. That was a good book. It was good. That was a good book. Will you ever write a book? Write a book? Yeah. I don't I don't think so. No. Do you want me to write a book? Yeah. I would read it. What would I write? Whatever you want. You could write about Sea Isle. Oh my oh well we did talk about this in Barbara. Frankie's big journey. <laughs> Children's books. Children's yes. books. You could write about Frankie. Frankie's big adventure. Yeah. I wish Frankie was up here. Mm, we could get him up here. We could get him up here. <laughs> and then he'd pee yeah and then he will pee well this was your first podcast and now you're done we're done we're done is That's, that all the questions well we pretty much covered everything and okay. a lot of the questions were repeats okay um there wasn't much that we didn't touch on that people wanted to know okay is there anything you want to say no thanks for having me on this was fun isn't it fun yeah don't you think we should start a boring podcast <laughs> we could we and could totally start we'll just a talk about podcast. books and, and being and bored cooking <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, we could talk about so much. Yeah, maybe we should do one of these while we're baking one day or while we're downstairs cooking. We'll we'll yeah. do a book rehash well, or something. Well, because I got those little microphones. Oh, yeah. That we can just put on and the audio sounds really good. Okay. So we can do a portable pod. We'll do that. Well, thanks so much for coming on Manifest, Thank Mom. you for having me. You're welcome. So fun. Um, you don't have anything public for people to follow in terms of like books? <sighs> no, okay. I don't. Well, my Goodreads. Do you want people your good can follow me on my good okay, to see everything it? I read? Yeah, it's my name, isn't it? I don't know what it is. Isn't it just my name? I, I didn't. I don't know. My mom's pretty tech savvy. How come you don't know? My profile. I think Sarah's your only follower, right? Yeah, my cousin. Yeah. yeah, my niece Sarah. It's Karen D. Simone, and it says one friend, one follower. <laughs> so if it, <laughs> it is my mom, and it's her on the beach, the picture. Um, and yeah. And her bio is apparently reading is my new hobby. That's right. That's a perfect um, bio. <laughs> okay. So yeah, follow my mom on Goodreads at Karen D. Simone. And um, I'll give you guys an update on that book journal that I'm going to make for her. Yeah. Yeah. I want it. Yeah. I'll keep you guys updated. All right, mom. Thank you. Thanks. Love you. Love you too. Bye guys. Bye. Selling a little or a lot. Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is a global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow every step of the way. So whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever it is that you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify also helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And you can also sell more with less effort thanks to the Shopify magic, which is your AI powered all-star. I love Shopify and it's also really cool to see that my favorite brands that I frequently shop from also use Shopify. It really just shows like how reliable of a source and site Shopify is. It really can scale your business whether you're only selling a few products or you're selling massive amounts of products. It really is such an amazing site and I would recommend it to anyone. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US. They're actually the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash manifest, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash manifest now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash manifest. <laughs>